Are you wondering how you can create a vector CD using Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Embattled Task Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this vector CD using Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Now let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu. Set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom in on your entire artboard. Go to Window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, you can start by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Simply click on your artboard to open this window where you can set the size of your new shape. Let's make it a 600 pixel circle. Click OK to create the shape. Move to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Select the stroke to remove the color. Reselect the fill and apply a radial gradient using this button. And then go to Object and Expand. Check these two boxes and click OK. And now if you have a look inside the Info panel, you should have a clipping group inside another group. To remove this group, you can right-click your selection and go to Ungroup. And then to remove the clipping mask, you need to go to Object, Clipping Mask and Release. Now you can select this ellipse and remove it. Select the mesh and focus on the control panel and lower the size to 600 pixels. Before we start editing this mesh, you can replace these colors with a simple one and then you can select the mesh tool from your toolbar. Let's start by adding two diagonal mesh lines somewhat like this. And then you'll need to add three mesh lines on this side. And another three on this side. When you're done, switch to the direct selection tool and use it to select some of these mesh points and adjust the handles to make the mesh line straight. Once you're happy with the look of your mesh, you can continue with the direct selection tool and use it to select the mesh points so that you can adjust the colors. Let's click and drag to select these five points. Set the color to 164, 167 and 186. Continue with these two points. Hold down the shift key to add to your selection these other two points and replace this color with 189, 237 and 255. Move to these eight points. Make sure that you have them all selected and set the color to 220, 216 and 231. Continue with these eight points. And for this point, set the color to 250, 249, and 219. Let's select these next eight points. Move to 
uh, set the color to 230, 181, and 211. And finally, select these eight points. And set the color to 204, 196, and 255. Now that you've got your mesh, let's use the selection tool to select it. Press Ctrl and C to copy it, and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Keep this copy selected and go to Object, Path, and Offset Path. Set the offset to only 0 pixels, which will create this shape which covers your entire mesh. Let's drag it on top of the mesh copy. First of all, select the stroke and remove the color. Select the fill and let's set the color to 155, 155 and 158. Remember to change the blending mode of this shape to multiply and then hold down the shift key to select it along with this mesh copy. You can press Ctrl and G to group these two shapes. Move to the control panel and increase the size of your group by 4 pixels. And then drag your group below the original mesh, like this. Now reselect the ellipse tool and use it to create a 604 pixel circle. Center this near shape. Click again on your artboard and this time create an 80 pixel circle. Again center it. Use the selection tool to select both of these shapes and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Drag this copy in the bottom of the layers panel as you'll need it at the end of this tutorial. Now select your mesh along with this group and press Ctrl G to group them. Select this new group along with this top compound path and go to Object, Clipping Mask and Make which will mask your group. Let's return to the ellipse tool and use it to create a new 80 pixel circle. Center it. Select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and set the weight to 5 points. Replace this color with 234, 237 and 242. Don't forget to align this stroke to outside. And then you can press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy of this circle. Keep it selected and first of all increase the diameter to 100 pixels. And then you need to increase the stroke weight to 30 points. Now you can press again Ctrl and F to add a second copy of this circle. And for this one you need to increase the diameter to 180 pixels and the stroke weight to 10 points. Now you can return to the Layers panel and select this bottom compound path. Make sure that the fill is selected and go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow to apply a subtle shadow effect. You'll need to change the blending mode to normal, lower the opacity to 50%, set the offset values to 0 and 15, Increase the blur to 25 pixels and don't forget to replace this color with 108, 90 and 164. Now you can click OK and OK to apply the effect. And for the final touch you'll need the rectangle tool to create a background. Again you can click on your artboard to create a shape which will cover your entire artboard. Let's center it. Drag it in the bottom of the layers panel. Keep the field selected and apply a linear gradient. Set the angle to 90 degrees and then you can focus on the gradient sliders to adjust this gradient. Let's start with this one, so double click it. Change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 108, 90 and 164. And then move to this other gradient slider. Again, double click it. Change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 192, 173, and 229. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.